help. Well, what we've got on the bench today, it's a, uh, a JVC HR3330. It's uh, one at first uh, VHS, well it's part of like the first line of VHS recorders released like the original ones. Uh, it's not the very first model but it's uh, it's like a, an updated version. Um, uh, this is uh, a rental version so it's model numbers 8902. Um, it's like a Thorn rental uh, model number. Um, uh, this I've had it uh, for quite a while, but I've never managed to get it working. Um, we'll see if we. I can't remember what I actually did. Uh, I know I changed ads when I got it, because um, I did. I did get it partially working. Um, I put new, when I got it, there were no belts on it at all. So I think like the person who had it before me had must have got it. Um, put new belts on, found that heads were knackered and uh, took belts back off again and got rid of it and now I got it but um, yeah uh, I, I put belts on it, I put a new head on it and I got it sort of working um, but I think there were some up with drum servo um, they were drum servo were hunting um, but we'll see what it's like I've just got it out down out at loft so it might need a bit of attention well it almost certainly will do get my test tape well, you can see clock works and everything actually I've lost screws for this somewhere along in the process of moving house um, that's coming off, I need to get, but for once I've got it, this front panel's coming off as well, but once I've got it all working, um, then I can glue them together, and I can put, I can get some screws for that, it's not a problem really, um, I'll put this tape in, see what happens, it'll help if I put it in video mode. show you what's happening. See head drums spinning um, but it's not pulling tape out or anything so pretty sure there's going to be uh, belts at least like come off or something if not broke or stretched or you know Cover this uh, lamp up and see what happens. Put the sensor on. So drums spinning. Aha! I can see what's going on. Um, there's a belt come off. See this belt here? It's fell off. I can't really see properly from here but there's a flywheel, you can just see it poking out there. This is the spindle. See, the wires are in the way. See here, there's uh, that's a spindle at a motor. Uh, capstan motor that drives this flywheel goes down through back down through uh, to the bottom of the deck and uh, 
drives the uh, like it drives capstan flywheel from down there. Um, at the bottom of that, another with another belt. Um, I don't know why they did it like that, but that's how they did it. Going up, across, back down, and over there. But that's come off. Um, whether I can put that, I don't think I'll be able to put that on without taking a set housing out. So that's what I'll do now. Before I take this out, I'll just inspect how this is. Uh, yeah. It goes like that. Now just looking at this uh, tab on the project mechanism, um, checking where it needs to be because if you put it in, because it could easily slip down back of this uh, bar here, and when you're putting it back, and if it does, the eject don't work. So I just. Having a quick check before I actually take it out, so I know how it how it's supposed to go. Yeah, I probably pulled the other belt off while I've been doing that. Yep. This belt here that drives this uh, pulley here that's for counter and there's like a hall effect thing we the a rotating magnet and uh, that's how it if that belt's come off it'll uh, it'll keep stopping because it thinks that reels aren't turning it's hard to get on this Keeps slipping off. So I might need to replace this, but I'm just going to put it on for now and see what happens. It's I've got it back on. I think I had to oil that pulley as well because. Uh, when I first got it because it makes a right racket. Like squealing and screaming. Racket. Great noise. Um, yeah, you can see all the oh, springs and pulleys and stuff. So if I make it think there's a tape in. This is a like eject lever. So if you press eject, it pulls it in. It needs to go in that gap between that and this back plate. Right. So let's try playing the tape and uh, see what happens. I've got this tape of. Uh, Tascard F that I use for, for testing things. Seems to be getting a picture. Huh. I'm just tracking. I don't know if you can hear it, but like drum motors speeding up and slowing down, it's like pulsing.
So it looks like we've got a fault with the servo. Uh, put the drum motor. Um, so we'll take this side panel off and uh, this is servo board, well it's servo and audio. Um, take this side panel off and uh, get a scope on it. Okay, so what I'm going to check first is test point nine here. Where we should have a trapezoid waveform with a pulse on it, halfway down the uh, slope at like the downward slope at, at waveform. We press play. You can see the, so it's kind of locking in, and you've got this thing here. Um, that's a, that pulse there. Um, so it's probably displaying a picture alright, but more or less at minute. So you can see this kind of getting longer and shorter, which it's probably swaying side to side at minute. I mean, I can't, I can't go it on on screen because I'm looking at what I'm recording, but I was just tracking. So that's doing that. You can see it pulsating as the motor does. But we have got uh, the wave bombs though. So it is the if I slow down the motor, slow down the drum, you can see it. So we're getting signals there, but it's just, it's a bit twitchy. Um, now what can happen um, with these as a capacitor, it's a tantalum one, um, that uh, it can go low value and cause this sort of gravy like servos under damped, you know. It's, too twitchy. Um, so I'll have a look at that. Um, probably just change it and uh, see where we are if that improves it or if it's just the same. But we can at least. If it doesn't fix it, we, we can at least eliminate that as cause of trouble. Uh, so this is a capacitor, C33. Um, I'll take this out and uh, it's a tantalum one. I'll, I'll put an electrolytic in. Um, when you're desoldering these sort of things, it's best to like put. A new, uh, a little dab of a fresh solder on it first, and then you can get old solder off easier. Be careful when you're using these uh, thingies, these solder pumps, and don't don't overheat it, because um, you can lift traces easily. They quite often they'll be stuck to the sides at all, so you might have to like cut it out from behind. But sometimes you can just like I've done there, I've melted it and it's come loose. See that needs to stop now because uh, that trace is a bit loose there, but. It's alright. I think that's enough. I should be able to get it out. I'll have to uh, unscrew the board first.
to take the bottom off because um, it'll give me better access to, uh, to the side and we can have a look underneath as well at the mechanism That's the mechanism of the belts and that. That's the uh, drum motor flywheel for, for a drum. That's that motor that I was talking about that uh, goes up and then there's that belt that had come off on that flywheel that runs this, that runs capstan. Um, and everything's run off that old uh, mechanism. So you've got this and that, that motors. All capstan and all that mechanism, they all run off this motor through the, via these belts and uh, idlers and that. And drum's got its own dedicated motor. <coughs> Belt drive head drum though. <laughs> you don't get many of them. Well, this is the only one that I've seen is uh, on this model, all the rest have been direct drive. That's the capacitor. Go focus. Little tantalum job. Um, we'll give this a test actually in this little test to see what it says. Saying it's 11.07 microfarads, 1.7 ohms. It looks all right, actually. Um, we'll change it anyway. Sold the new one in. Yeah, it's still the same. But we know we've got um, impulses and all that lot. Uh, and we've eliminated that, uh, that capacitor. So I think the next thing to do is try and adjust uh, the gain of the servo, the drum discriminator gain. It all works. Um, you saw that trapezoid waveform. That's created by uh, well, there's the magnets on the bottom of the drum flywheel uh, cause a, a pulse that uh, 
well, there's various processing and it's it's made into that that trapezoid and uh, there's a pulse from um, the control track on the tape this is in plate like um, <coughs> and so what happens is like if the motor is running too slow that uh, that trapezoid is going to arrive late in relation to the, uh, the pulse from the thing from the control track, so it's going to be, that control track is going to arrive further up that slope, and it's the voltage on that slope where that con where that uh, control track pulse is that's uh, used to power the motor. So like if it's too, if it's slow there's going to be an higher voltage just to motor to speed it up and if it's if it's fast it's going to be lower down that that ramp that it's going to get a lower voltage to slow it down I mean that sets to like the general speed and that um, but there's also for like short term fluctuations you've got the discriminator um, so like the motor's fed through a, uh, a resistor and either side of that resistor is connected to like this inverting and non-inverting inputs of the op amp so like you know say if there's a bit of if tape, tape gets a bit tight and it's it's having to pull it harder it's going to draw more current the motor and there's going to be a voltage drop across that resistor um, so the uh, the op amp will compensate, you know, because it tries to bring both its inputs to the same level, get more drive to get through, uh, you know, past this obstacle. But like that, it, it's uh, it's prone to oscillation, like any like negative feedback loop, where it overcorrects under, you know, so it overshoots, undershoots, overshoots, undershoots, which seems like what's happening here so uh, I mean there's a correct way of setting this um, using oscilloscope and that but I'm gonna just see if I can do it by eye if not then get oscilloscope out so I made it worse, turn it that I'm gonna try and set it so that it's like minimum. Minimum jitter. That looks alright. Still got a bit of wobble to it. That don't look too bad. So I'll just say by eye. I've decided um, so I don't have to mess about with it again. Uh, I am gonna set it with oscilloscope. Um, so what I've done is you see this. 
it's a 100 ohm 1 watt resistor well it's actually 4 430 ohm ones uh, in parallel attach this across the motor what I want to do is put it in play and pause and uh, have a look at the waveform at the collector of transistor X9 um, which is part of discriminator circuit so what we have to do is adjust this until it becomes unstable and then just back off and see that it's gone unstable and you back off until they only just disappear because you want it maximum gain that you can have without instability so that should be a perfect adjustment there tape lock straight in Try that uh, test tape again. See if there's any sideways wobble. Tiny bit when it first starts, but other than that, bang on. Less fussy with tracking as well now. That's nice and stable. So I think that's that's that video set up. Oh, the other adjustment that you can do, you have to when you're setting the drum servo up, uh, you do that drum discriminator first. Um, and then there's uh, the uh, free running speed adjustment which I'm not going to do because it doesn't look like it needs doing the other one, uh, the other adjustments are 49 uh, which is this here which sets the free running speed of the drum um, and that you can just set by uh, in the same way that you'd set up the speed of a record player uh, you just put it in record with no signal um, so that it's not in cam like put it on set it to camera and don't connect out so there's no sync pulses and then just look at drum uh, under like a, a fluorescent light or a strobe or some 50 hertz strobe light and uh, <coughs> if it looks stationary then you've got it at right speed just adjust it, you'll be able to see it slowly turning one way or other and you just adjust it so it stood, looks like it's stood still um, but yeah I might look into uh, picture quality on another video but for now we've solved this uh, a drum servo problem. So, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.